episode is a little different. This is my first in-person interview, and we're at PNC Field, and I'm with Aaron McGarty, right? McGarity. McGarity. Yep. And he plays for the New York Yankees um, for the minor league team, the Terrier Riders. And yeah, thanks so much for coming for his game. I really appreciate it. Happy to. No, this is this is an exciting. Uh, I, lo I love to have a uh, little pre-game interview and uh, chop it up a little bit, talk about some baseball. Absolutely. Like, were you part of the Terrier Riders in April, right? Yes, so I didn't make the opening day roster. Um, there was a little bit of a roster crunch happening uh, coming out of spring training and some guys moving up and down. Um, so I wasn't sure where I would end up come uh, season. But then uh, the front office guys called me in and uh, let me know I was going to spring on the last day of spring training. Like, were you like surprised when you got called up to the Red Riders? I was. I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, I had a feeling I would go to either Double A AA or Triple A, um, being that I threw pretty well in Double A last year. Um, and now I'm getting a little bit older, so I had a feeling that they wanted to test me a little bit. Um, and then I didn't make the roster. Then they added me a couple of days later, so it was a pleasant surprise. Amazing. Were you in Jacksonville Yankees? Yes, the Yankees drafted me in 2017. I got my degree from Virginia Tech, and they drafted me. Oh, Virginia Tech is a good baseball team. Yeah, they weren't so good when I was there, but uh, you know, obviously every program has some struggles and some ups and downs. Um, and we were on the downtrend when I was there, but yeah, they definitely have turned it around with the uh, new head coach, Coach Shep, and uh, he's done a tremendous job with the program. Like, how do you think like playing for Virginia Tech kind of helped you grow as a pitcher? Now, I know like we're, we're being playing for the Red Riders, it can definitely be a struggle, especially the Yankees. Yankees are such a big team, and the Yankees are just like 127 rings. Like, how does it feel to kind of be part? Of it? Uh, it's, it feels great. Uh, there, there couldn't be a better organization to have uh, your minor league career with. They care a lot about your development and how you're progressing as a player. Um, and you know, college prepared me for this as well. I don't think I would have been uh, mature enough to come out of high school and be a professional about the game of baseball. I think it would have been difficult for me. So to have that uh, stepping stone and that important process going to college and, and uh, knowing how to create some time management skills and and uh, you know complete tasks and just being a, a professional about uh, you know day in and day out and how you structure your routine. So yeah, college was a, um, a huge a huge part of my development as a player mm -hmm. as, a, as a person. Yeah, like what did you, like did you, like was your Virginia Tech was your number one option? Did you have like different schools you choose? Because like with the baseball process in terms of choosing schools. It can be a very hard process in terms of picking what school you want to go to. My brother is a baseball player and he wants to go to college, D1, and play in MLB. So I know, like, with him, he's trying to get drafted and all these things. So how's it kind of fun to process of getting drafted and going to the school like uh, yeah, so it's um, it's an interesting process when you're when you're getting recruited to go to a college. Uh, some colleges will be very upfront with you. Um, if they really want you, they'll come they'll come right at you, and you know they'll they'll see you on a Tuesday. So for Virginia Tech, to give you a more concrete example, they saw me pitch on a Friday. They had me up there the following weekend, eight days later, at Virginia Tech on campus, and then that's where they offered me eight days later. So it was a very quick size process and if a school wants you they'll be very upfront about it yes. um, and then there's some instances where you know uh, BC, I was in talks with PCU at the time um, talks with I believe George Mason as well so other schools that were you know maybe not as uh, interested in me but kind of keeping me at arm's length to you know maybe if I get a little bit better they'll, boom, they'll, they'll take the opportunity to offer me but Virginia Tech came came right forward and, and uh, offered me a little bit of a scholarship and it was easy to say yes to them because both my parents went there as well and uh, I've been going to football games since I was a since I was a kid and uh, I loved Blacksburg so it was a very easy decision to say yes to them. Wait, were you born in Virginia? I was. I'm from Richmond, Virginia, about three hours from where Virginia Tech is in Blacksburg, Virginia. And, um, yeah, like I said, I've been uh, growing up going to that campus and spending some time there so it's been... Uh, yeah, it was a very, very pleasant and uh, easy decision to make. To say yes. mm -hmm. Especially with Virginia, because Virginia said that you have to say yes some family down there. And, like, even though, like, Virginia Tech and, like, the whole state are different times, like, I know with going to college in, like, let's just say, Virginia, I know, like, a lot of people like to stay in their home state and call, like, these are books, like, tuition, and I know it can be a lot of cost lots of money for to stay in school. Is that, like, a big consideration for you? It was a, uh, a consideration. Um, 
but it wasn't it, it wasn't a major factor in my decision making. Um, obviously, you get that in-state tuition; it's a little bit less expensive uh, for you to uh, fund your trip there to uh, university. But for me, it was a it was more a um, you know my parents had been there, and I had such close ties to the university that yeah. um, and then it didn't it didn't hurt that the finances were correct as well. Um, so all in all, you know, in every single box that you can really check. Um, being recruited for Jimmy to have check those boxes for me. Yeah, definitely. It's like, I grew up in Pennsylvania. Like, I, my family, all my family went to Penn State. I know it was a lot of people, they're like, oh, you should go to Penn State. I know my family's big on going to Penn State for me, especially since that's kind of major cases. Since, um, I hope Penn State's going to be communication schools. I know that my family's like, oh, you got to go to Penn State. Like, it's British thing. Like, I know, like, with having family there, it gives just kind of like a pass down on Virginia Tech as a say, keep your hands with them when they're kind of passing down to your kids. Yeah, no, it's true. Um, it definitely aids in the decision if you have some ties there already. Mm -hmm. yeah. like how old were you when you first started out playing baseball? How old was I when I started playing baseball? I, played the, I went the you know the entire little league route uh, through t-ball. Um, you know, so at, at four or five years old, you start playing t-ball and you never really look back. You're, you know, playing Little League for those first few years, or at least I did, and then you start playing travel ball when you're, um, you know, around 10, 11, 12, you have a few years on the little field, as they call it, and then uh, when you get to middle school, it's you play for the middle school team, which can sometimes be good or sometimes not be. Um, I played for a travel team and a middle school team, and then when you get to high school, it's, you know, you play completely dedicated to the high school, um, and then you travel in the summer and travel in the fall, so, um, yeah. To, to be playing ever since I was five years old, 23 years ago, it's been, uh, it's been pretty cool. Mm -hmm, definitely. That's how me and my brother first started. I played, me and my brother played t-ball and everything. Now he's like playing um, high school baseball and now travel. It's just like, when you look back on those moments in Little League, you're like, like it basically kind of prepares you for where you are now, especially in high school ball. It's like sometimes with being in high school, you often come sometimes up playing during the high school team. So it's like, that's the point of travel ball is that like, you have more opportunities to like play. It's a very, yeah, you're exactly right. It's a very gradual process. Um, every step along the way is, is important. And like you said, when you reflect back on it, it's, um, it's a long time coming to get to this point. You don't just wake up one day and, you know, be a professional baseball player for the Rail Riders here. It's, uh, you know, every little piece of your life goes into, you know, providing a scaffolding for what you're standing on in the current moment. So it's, it's been a pretty cool journey so far. Like, what is like your like, routine before you change? What's my routine? Um, so it's funny, I'll play, uh, so in the mornings, I'll play um, a little bit of video games when I first get up, have some food, um, get outside, put my feet on the earth a little bit. And then uh, when I get here to the clubhouse, it's, um, it's, it's pretty simple, honestly. Just get my body ready for these throwing programs that we do prior to batting practice. Um, do some soft tissue work. Um, and then when you get to the, ultimately get to game time and you're getting ready to go into the game in the bullpen, it's just throw a few of those heavy, squishier plyometric balls, uh, throw with the catcher and, and then get on out there. But I'd say the most crucial part of it all is just visualization, uh, getting those reps in, in your mind before you go out there and throw, picturing, you know, picturing the stadium, picturing the batter in the box, picturing the sequence that you're going to use to get a guy out, and uh, then when you get up there, it's, it's much easier to stay calm and, and be able to execute the plan that you've created in your head already. Mm -hmm. And do you think the fans play a valid role in your performance? Yeah, yeah, you know, the fans can be, um, can be many different things. The fans can be distracting, the fans can be energizing. Um, they can be um, have a little bit of camaraderie with you, um, so it's it, it, they're multifaceted the fans. And sometimes you have to tune them out, and sometimes you you can embrace them for a little bit of extra energy. So um, it's it's basically being cognizant of where your headspace is at, and uh, not allowing the, the fans to take you in a direction that you don't want to go. But if they're projecting you in a direction that you'd like to go. Let their, let their energy come through to you. Mm -hmm. Especially yeah. Yankee fans. Like Yankee fans can be this very like energized. Especially fans yeah. around here, like with like AAA, it's just like 
a lot of the Yankees fans like it come down to AAA. And when they're here, whether it's like I knew you were at the Yankees game or here at the Rare Bryant Stadium, like there's so many Yankee fans that it's like are just so fired up. My, my experience with this team is just like each game is just so surreal with fans and the players and as well. Because like every fan is energized. Every fan is just trying to have a good time. Exactly. No, you, you hit the nail on the head talking about Yankees fans. They're they're you know, they're passionate is yeah. the word I would use. They they love their team and they want to see their team succeed. So when the team's not succeeding, you'll you'll hear about it. You know, they'll they'll they might throw some negativity your way, but the way you handle it says everything about you. Um, when you do inevitably come out of a, a downturn um, and start climbing your way back up, the fans will be right there to give you a boost and, and, uh, and keep you going. So um, going back to the, my previous point, yeah, just letting the fans push you in a, in a good direction, but also not letting them take you in a direction that you don't want to go in. Oh, yeah. And, like, who do you think this has the most energy or basically has kind of, like, a big attitude for this game? Here with the Rail Riders yeah. or with the Yankees in general? Um, either one. Either one. I'd say with the Yankees in general, it's been uh, Austin Wells. Um, he's a catcher in Double A right now, and I'm sure he'll be up here before we know it. And you know, he's he's a guy that I think if you ask anybody, he's a tremendous clubhouse presence and uh, keeps the energy uh, in a very good place. Um, if we're you know losing, he keeps it he keeps it light, and if we're winning, I mean, he just crescendos the team into a, uh, um, you know, into, into a possible win streak. So I mean, love having him on a team. And then for here with the Rail Riders, I would say, man, who would I say? Um, you know, Tanner Tully's got a little bit of a, uh, a quiet sort of demeanor, but when he talks, it's always something, uh, it's always something funny. It's always something lighthearted. He keeps, uh, it, you need someone to kind of reset your mental on uh, some days he's the guy to talk to. Yeah, there's always that one guy that always like jokes around in a bad situation. You're, like every clubhouse has to have that one guy to look to Exactly. You never really know if he's being serious. Like I don't think he's I think I might have had one or two serious conversations with him since being here, but most of the time it's it's lighthearted, it's fun. He's he's a great guy to have around. Definitely. And the last question I have for you is um, what is some advice for baseball players that just want to make it the major? Oh, uh, man, best advice I can give for youngsters trying to be in the majors, I would say it would be consistency. Um, going back to my previous point of, you know, this, the scaffolding um, being below you, um, you know, from where you are in the present moment, um, it's basically about building that scaffolding coming up. You, you don't necessarily need to have the, the grand plan of, you know, I'm going to put this piece here and this piece here, and then, you know, next year I'm going to have this, 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 and this. And, um, it's basically about winning each day, winning each week, and winning each month. Um, setting those those small goals for yourself as you uh, progress in your journey, because those goals will constantly change. My goals now as a AAA baseball player are completely different than my goals were in college and high school and middle school. So it's it's having a very general sense of your of your goal in the distance, your long term goal, but then being specific and consistent with your short-term goals and how you're going to get there. Definitely. Like, you're exactly right. And, like, I just want to thank you so much for taking the time before today's game. I really think you're taking the time. And best of luck with today's game. I know you're definitely going to be great if you end up pitching. I know you've, like, two days last night. You've had you're absolutely terrific. I wish you the best of luck. And good luck to you. Thank you very much. I appreciate uh, you taking the time to be with me and, and have a little sit down and chat, you know, chat baseball and chat about me. So it's been, it's been fun.